beyond the skies You and I We're breaking bounds On Baobab All right, welcome, welcome everyone We are so happy to have you all here Welcome, welcome. We are so happy to talk with you today about writing and how to improve your mastering your professional writing in 2024. Give me just a second. And I think we're going to start out with a poll. Let me share my screen. All right, you can all see my screen, I hope. And we have a question here. Happy to be here, Eugene from Ghana. And we got our chat. Let me just pull up my chat. Super, super. And we have 69 participants. Wow, welcome, welcome, everyone. For starters, we have a poll. Um, let me put out a poll for us to start. So with talking about writing, how can we not, how can we talk about writing without talking about AI? I'd like to know from all of you, how many of you use AI in your writing? So we're getting people to respond. Oh my gosh, so far 75% of you say yes. Welcome, welcome, everyone. So happy to see so many of you here. Welcome, Enoch from the Ivory Coast. As we're here, if you have questions or comments during the uh, presentation, you're welcome to put your your thoughts in chat. Um, at the end of the, the presentation, people will be getting a copy of the recording. We will make the PPT available to people also. Welcome, welcome. And for the participants, let's just see who's here with us for our attendees. See if there are any familiar faces. Wow. Nice. Welcome, welcome. People use ChatGPT and Will bought ChatGPT. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. What other tools do you use? I'm seeing ChatGPT. Any other AI writing tools that you use? A lot are saying ChatGPT. Welcome, welcome, Bing. Yeah, Bing. Paper Pal, I've never heard of that one. That's interesting. Thank you, thank you. Very interesting. Ari Scrivener, I haven't heard of that one. Google Bard, that's another really common one. Well, thank you. Well, today we're going to be talking about how you can use how you can really make AI really help you improve in your writing. Let's take a look for our agenda here. We have, and if you have questions also, you can put them in the question box or the chat box. Right, Sonic? I'm not familiar with that one. Welcome, Timothy. All right. So our agenda today, we're going to first talk about challenges. Welcome. We are all here because you want to, you're writers and you want to improve your writing. Um, we're going to talk about challenges you face. We're going to talk about ChatGPT. We're going to do a comparison of AI tools and how to get the most out of them. ChatGPT, Grammarly, and WordTune are three that we're going to look at. We're also going to look at MS Word because that has some AI built into it. Um, we're going to talk about key principles of professional writing. We're going to talk about how to make your editing skills more strategic and effective. And lastly, how to improve your email writing. So we're covering a lot. We're covering a lot, but I think it'll be, I, I hope this will be interesting for you. So for starters, if I can ask you, what are, you can put these in chat. Let me ask you to put into chat, what are some challenges you face when you're writing? What are some challenges you face? What do you find when you're writing something, maybe it's for work or maybe some of you are still in school. What are some challenges that you face when you're writing? Maybe sometimes you might get writer's block. Put it to chat. What are generating ideas? Thank you, Wendy. Um, lack of ideas, writing precisely and concisely. 
um, paraphrasing, how to organize your ideas, how to be creative, how to communicate clearly what you want to say. Um, you know, writing, writing is not like math. Don't we wish that writing was more like math? Two plus two is four. It's not. It's this mysterious, wonderful process where we get our ideas down. So let me thank you so much, Timothy. I know being the reader, editor, and writer of your writing, very common. So some, some things that I often hear, oh, fitting your words within a word limit, very true. People are so busy, we're finding more and more that there are word limits on the things we're writing. So sometimes adapting to time pressure, if you have tight deadlines, maybe writer's block, um, Maybe I need to move my thing here. Um, fear of criticism, right? You're worried about maybe being criticized about your writing. Lack of knowledge of a subject area. Correct grammar, very good. Sometimes feeling vulnerable, right? Lots of reasons. So sometimes when you have those feelings, you might think, oh, well, I'll just use ChatGPT, right? No one, no one will know. Um, and so I want us to take a look at one. So here is a here is a bio written about Samuel Kibaki. And I want you to take a look at this, you guys. I want you to take a look and I want you to tell me, do you think this was written by a human or do you think it was written by AI? Put it into the chat. What do you think? Do you think this was written by a human or do you think it was written by AI? What do you think? And I'm still seeing people put in their challenges for writing. Thank you so much. Plagiarism, how to resonate with your audience. Good, good, good. I'm seeing lots of things. Oh, good, 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 good. So, so far, some people think it's human. A lot of you are saying AI. A lot, most of you, I think, are saying AI. Some say partly human, partly AI. Very good. Well, let's take a look. The big reveal, the big reveal. Take a look. So it's written by AI, 95%. <laughs> Thank you so much. Some of you are like, oh, I can't tell. Right? I actually I went into chat GPT and I said, write me a biography of a young African professional. And this is 100% written by AI. And for those of us who deal a lot with writing, and are, are really in this field, we can tell, we know, we know, and I'm gonna share the results, right? So most of you do use AI in your writing and hopefully by the end of this presentation, you're gonna have ideas about how to use it better, right? So that you don't fall into this trap of having it do the writing for you. Um, so this totally written by AI, so I went into ChatGPT and did it. How can we tell? When we see the writing of, of AI, there are certain word combinations or, or word selections that make us know this was not written by a, a, a human. It's often too exaggerated, like forging partnerships, a charismatic advocate. You often don't see those words together. Thank you so much, Kima. Thank you, dynamic, unwavering. They're, they're words that we don't often use, accolades, all of those excellent. It's always the vocabulary is too much. Thank you so much, Florence. It's too much. And so that it's a real giveaway for it. And we recognize it immediately. The tone, the tone lacks any personality. It it right, we can tell. We can tell. So how do you use these AI tools to your advantage? So there are there are four common AI tools, MS Word, ChatGPT, Grammarly, and WordTune, right? Those are the ones that I looked at. Let's compare them. So in terms of cost, they're all free. Um, MS Word is free with your, your MS Word software. ChatGPT is free. Grammarly is free, but it does have a premium upgrade if you want. WordTune is free. I think it also has, a, has an upgrade. Just an overview of key features, and then we're going to look at some more in detail. Um, so MS Word looks at spelling, punctuation, tone and style. ChatGPT, uh, it generates human-like text. Um, 
and it can assist with generating content, give suggestions, and answer queries. It's very versatile. Grammarly um, provides comprehensive grammar and spelling checks. It's a more, and it can give advanced writing style suggestions. WordTune um, can help you with phrasing and tone and style. And it's limited to eight queries per day. So we're going to take a look at this in detail. So first with MS Word. MS Word, um, this is an example of what comes up in MS Word. Um, let me know in chat if any of you use the MS Word editor and if you like it. Um, check your editing features and options. Make sure your proofing language is correct if it's in English. And the editor is activated by running spell check. And when you do that, this is what comes up. It gives you an editor score. You can select the formality of writing. It can give you spelling corrections, grammar corrections, and refinements of clarity, conciseness, formality, and inclusiveness. So it's pretty good. Thank you so much, um, Ohima, that yes, sometimes you use MS Word. MS Word, it, they do have that editor. I confess I find it a little clumsy. I find it a little clunky to use compared to some of the others. Let's look at ChatGPT next. Let's do uh, ChatGPT. And for this one, I'm going to stop my PowerPoint and I'm going to stop share for a moment. And we're going to switch to another window. And I'm going to show you what I did. So you should all be able to see my screen now. And let me come up. So what, here's what we did. We hold on. Nope. So I have a student. I teach. And I have a student. She, she's studying nutrition. And she wrote a paper about intermittent fasting, right? something she's very, very interested in. And let me make sure that I can still see my chat. Good. OK, good, good, good. You can see my screen. Thank you. She wrote a paper about intermittent fasting. Interesting. She's really passionate about the topic. And so I said, please review this essay and give three suggestions for improvement. So we're going to look at this essay and we're going to compare across these three, these different platforms about what type of feedback we get on it. So with this one, I put it in ChatGPT. And I said, give me three suggestions for improvement. And it gave me three suggestions on clarity and flow. They had some criticisms, citation and integration, and elaboration and support. You don't need to read in detail what they say. I'm just going to say in response that I disagreed with all three of these suggestions. I thought her clarity and flow was great. I thought her citation integration was fine. And I thought her elaboration and support was fine. So chat GPT can be really subjective. And depending upon what you put into the query, you may or may not get valuable feedback. This was very general. Um, this was a very general request. And for, for our purposes, for my student, it wasn't helpful at all. And I thought that was really, really interesting. It's it, it's so subjective that that. I mean, yeah, you know, sometimes this can work, but for me, it, it it didn't work. It wasn't helpful at all. So let me stop share and let me show you what happened when we use Grammarly. We use Grammarly. And let me pull up my Grammarly. And we're going to switch it. And if you could put in chat for me, if you could put in chat, um, if you use Grammarly, let me know in chat if you use Grammarly. I'm going to share my screen. Hold on. While I'm pulling up my screen, let me know in chat if you use Grammarly. Uh, There we go, very good. First time hearing about it, all right. So let me, so I'm gonna do new share, share screen. So here I have Grammarly. 
Right, and I see some of you use it. So all I do is I type in the, I, I paste it in the paper. And remember, Grammarly is free for the basic subscription. Um, you can upgrade to a premium subscription. But take a look at this one. So what comes up? They notice a, so they notice a, a capitalization error. She forgot to capitalize Bible, right? So we got that one. I accepted it. And then look at the type of corrections they're, they're saying. So wording, they're saying in order to, and they're saying um, you can, they're saying it can be more concise. They say you don't need in order to, just make it more concise. And then they have a wording suggestion. Um, so lose, correct wording, avoid disease, comma, we need to add and, and lose weight. Okay, that's a good one. Look, they, a punctuation. She forgot to put a period after M. Oh, that's a good catch. So you can see these are sentence level issues, right? They're sentence level. They see here there's a redundancy. She said fast, fasting is really effective. Grammarly says, hey, it's either effective or it's not. You don't need to say really. You can just say effective. Right, or maybe they want to use another word. So when we when we look at this, it's not changing the language. It's give it's giving sentence level, um, it's giving sentence level suggestions. Right, period of time. <coughs> Excuse me, period of time. They say it's a, it's a redundancy. You don't need to say that. You can say period or time. So yeah, I'll go with that one. Laundry says that ketones is, oh, there's a verb correction. It should be are, except um, article usage. You should say the instead of the dietitian, dietitian, except. You can see it's very, um, it, it's, it's very helpful. It's very focused. And it's looking at correctness, clarity, engagement, so it gives us, us different suggestions here. It does have a generative AI in here. I don't exactly know what that does. One common thing I find in this student's writing is she tends to use the infinitive and not the gerund. And a lot of the corrections are telling her, hey, instead of say effective to reduce, it should be effective in reducing. And it's nice for her to see that pattern. She can go and review that and say, oh, this is something that I should check on. What do you guys think? Are you impressed by it? I'm super impressed by it because it's making her paper more correct. And it's finding her errors, but it's still her paper. Right? I have no doubt that she wrote it. So it's a really nice, it's a really nice example. I'm going to stop my share for a second. I know it's very impressive. Thank you guys for putting that into chat. I'm going to bring up another AI tool that was recommended by a guest that we had um, a few months ago. She liked this one called WordTune. I'm going to bring this up. It's called WordTune and I'm going to sign in with uh, with email. Let me pull up my chat, make sure I have my chats. Very good. Yeah, I hadn't heard of it before. It's interesting. So I'm going to continue with email. Sorry, it logged me out. Let me log back in. I'm sorry, should go to log in. There we go, log in. And so this one, if you're having trouble with phrasing, um, oh, all of these things close. So I, so what we did was we took part of her essay, like intermittent fasting consists of not eating for several hours. I thought the the wording was a little. Um, strange. I don't know. It could be improved. So I asked her to rewrite it. I asked WordTune to rewrite it. And you can see it comes up with several suggestions. Fasting intermittently involves not eating for several hours. 
During intermittent fasting, you do not eat. A person who intermittently fasts does not eat for an extended period of time. Right, so you can look at this and you can see there are eight daily generations to go. So it's okay. I mean, it's interesting if you need a quick idea. With this, we then went back to ChatGPT. Let me pull ChatGPT up again. Um, can you guys see my ChatGPT screen? I hope you can. I hope you can see my ChatGPT screen. So we went in and good, good. And I went back into um, fasting periods. All right. So I went back into ChatGPT. And I said, so now I'm being really focused with it. Please give me ways of rephrasing this sentence. Intermittent fasting consists of staying long hours with no, not eating, with no eating. I thought it was an awkward phrasing. And it gave me this. It involves extended periods without consuming food. Consuming, I like that. I like that one. But I said, try again. You give me another one. And they said, intermittent fasting entails refraining from eating for extended periods. Oh, I like that. I like that, right? So you can, the more focused you are with your queries with ChatGPT, sometimes the more helpful that it can that it can be, right? So ChatGPT, it it can help with that. It can also help with ideas, um, right? It can it can help with idea generation. Also, if you need, um for that one. So we went back to ChatGPT and let me come back to my PowerPoint. So, so that was looking at ChatGPT, Grammarly and WordToon. And the key takeaway was, I think in comparing these different platforms, ChatGPT does the work for you, right? I could say into ChatGPT, I could say, Write me a five paragraph essay on what intermittent fasting is and it'll do it. But it's it's not your writing. And so it's it's plagiarism. It's obviously not written by you. Grammarly, I think, is the advantage is that it doesn't do the work for you. It edits and provides editing suggestions for what you have written. And that's often what we're looking for. ChatGPT is good for idea generation. Sometimes if you're not sure what to write, you can ask for it for some ideas. So you don't want ChatGPT to do the writing for you, but you still want to have really good writing skills, right? And the key principles of professional writing are, um, and I'm going to, let me come back up here. Let me come, come back to here. So I recently worked with a student who was applying for, uh, for graduate programs. And he he gave ChatGPT his biographical information, his resume information, and he put the essay question into ChatGPT and asked ChatGPT to answer the essay question using his background, his biology, his resume. And what came out, yes, it was tailored to the student, but it was so clearly written by AI that it didn't seem authentic at all. And it really is considered plagiarism if you do that. So if you're applying for any graduate programs or jobs or you want to make sure that you're writing it yourself, you can go to ChatGPT saying, you know what, I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, if, you know, what are, what are the three, uh, you know, you can ask it for like trends or content, but don't have it do the writing for you. Um, another example, another example, I asked students, um, I said, what is the one job you would never want to do? And one of my students said she would never want to be a doctor. And she wrote an essay about it. And for fun, we put the same essay into ChatGPT. What was interesting was it was the same content. ChatGPT and the student both identified it's a lot of education. It takes many years. The work itself may be 
uh, difficult because you're operating on people and there's a lot of blood. Uh, it may be expensive paying for all that, those years and years of education. It may be stressful. They identified the same topics, but the way they wrote about it was very different. And the students' writing was more vibrant, more vivid, more, it was funnier. Whereas ChatGPT, it was boring and, 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 you could tell it was it was written by AI. So be very cautious when you're using ChatGPT to help you with writing essays. Again, it can give you ideas. Don't don't have it do the writing for you. So the key, uh, and then Quillbot. So Quillbot, as I understand, and and other people can jump in. My understanding about Quillbot. It's the same thing. It's another AI generated tool. My understanding is that Quillbot can help you modify your essay so that it defies AI detection, but we still know it's AI written. So I wouldn't use, I, I don't know that much about Quillbot, but from the little I saw of it, I didn't like it and I wouldn't recommend using it. Um, and we have a question from Paulina. It says, how do we check if a writing was done by generative AI? I'm going to quit my screen for a second, and I'm going to show you, because that's actually, sorry. Let me let me come back to my PowerPoint. That's a great question. Let me answer that at the end. It's a great question. It's a great, great, great question. Can you all see my screen again? I think, I don't know. Hold on. No. Here we go. Great question. Great, 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 great question. Let's look at that at the end. It's a great question. So, but before getting to that, so the goal is that we want, you want your writing to be professional. You want it to be clear, complete, concise, correct, and courteous. Um, right? Yeah, thank you, William. It's the zero GPT detector. We'll look at that one. But anyway, so these are the, the key principles. And I'm going to give you some strategies for how to achieve that in a way that's strategic and focused. I hope, I hope this is helpful. So the solution. Use ChatGPT to help with writer's block and selective phrasing, right? You can get it for content. In terms of sentence level editing, I have two suggestions, and we'll take a look. We'll take a look. So my first suggestion is to edit for strong subject, noun subjects. So if you find in your writing the word it, it is important to come, to, it is essential to acknowledge the challenges faced by many African nations. The it is an empty subject. It's an empty subject. It doesn't mean anything. And so you want to take it and make it a strong noun. Coming to class on time is important many African nations face, right? We don't need the it is. Another example is that there are and the there is. There are over 1.3 billion people living in Africa. There is a, de a vast diversity of landscapes in Africa, right? Um, and, they, and for the questions, we'll look at the questions at the end. I'm seeing them out of the corner of my eye. These are great questions. Well, at the end, let's do our Q&A. But this is good. So there are and there is. Make it a strong noun subject. Currently, over 1.3 billion people live in Africa. Make your noun subject strong, concrete, and powerful. The landscapes in Africa are the most diverse in the world, right? You don't need the there is or there are. These little things help to transform your writing to make your writing more powerful, more direct, more concrete. The last one is this. This is an interesting webinar. This is an important program. Look for those words and make them more specific. This webinar is interesting. Baobab is an important program, right? So that's one tip that I think is really, really powerful. Uh, it's a really powerful editing strategy. The second editing strategy is that you may find that you have a lot of transition words in your writing. Therefore, furthermore, also in addition, moreover, nevertheless, and what I find is that when often when people are writing, they're writing and ideas are coming to them and they don't want to lose the idea. So they say, oh, also, and they write it down. And then, oh, furthermore, and they write it down. 
But when you go back and you reread it, the connections between the sentences and the ideas needs to be developed more. In my experience, these you want to limit your transition words. Transition words usually come more in the conclusion and the introduction. They less so in the body. If you find yourself having a lot of them, it's a flag. It's a flag. When you have them analyze if connections between sentences need to be clarified or expanded upon. In my experience, when students use these words, there's often another idea behind it that is really interesting. It's really important, like, like wow, like a, like a really rich aspect that they can include. So those are my two suggestions. And I think they're, they're, they, they help transform people's writing. So the next topic I want to talk about is uh, email writing. All right, let's take a look. So um, I have an email here. This is a real email that was written by one of my students. And uh, critique it. Go into our chat. What do you think? Then hi. Hi, Joe. I want to ask you if I could book the VR today after the class at 3 p.m. Thank you, Ahmed. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, Jiteka thinks it's too formal, mm, too informal. I think it's too casual, not too formal. I think it's too informal. I want to ask you, right? What do you think of the subject line? Hi. Hi. Oh, thank you. Right? <laughs> it was an email. Oh, thank you so much. Good, good. And it's too short. We don't know any context. My poor Joe. Joe doesn't know who Ahmed is. and. Uh, he doesn't know what Ahmed is, and he doesn't know why Ahmed is emailing him. Um, so and it, it illustrates common issues that we see. Oh, I know. The one subject word. Thank you so much, Catherine. So subject line, you want to make it specific and include a deadline. The opening, you want to make it direct, and you want to make sure the context is clear. For editing. Um, thank you, Eddie. Replace I wanna with I would like. Thank you so much. Editing, check your spelling and punctuation. Check for jargon or texting lingo. And for the closing, end with a closing action item and show appreciation. This last one of showing appreciation is a big one. And it's a big one. I don't know about your cultures, but in American culture, if you have a strong appreciation at the end of your message, you can ask for almost anything. Like if you have a really good, good, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Like if you have a good appreciation ending and, and in American culture, it comes at the end, you can, you can ask for so much. Right, you can ask for so much. I know everyone loves to be appreciated. And so I put this together to give you like a little menu of different ways of saying, showing your appreciation. And and another thing that I recommend is that you you can show your appreciation twice, right? You can say, you know, I really appreciate it. Thank you taking the for taking the time. <laughs> You're so funny, Rhodes. You just said thank you so much. That's so funny. But you can double your appreciation, and that's another approach that's that's very nice. So we'll make this available for you. So if you want to refer to it later, you can. Oh, you're funny. Thank you. So the revised email. You can see we made the subject line more specific. Request to book the VR and virtual VR is the virtual reality lab. We have the date. It's more formal. Hello, Mr. Near. This is a student. He really should say Mr. Near because he doesn't know him yet. And then he starts out directly. Could I come to the VR lab today at three? He gives the context. Professor McDonald asked me to email you about booking the VR lab. I was absent last week. She would like me to watch the video and make up what I missed. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Right, little things that make it a more powerful Email, even though it's a very simple message, you can see how it's much more polished. 
in this one. I know we did the double thanks in this one too. So wrapping up, we looked at the challenges people face when they're writing, right? Coming up with ideas, editing, um, Looking at the pitfalls of ChatGPT, don't let it do the work for you. It can help you with idea generation, rephrasing some words. Um, I was working with a, a woman on her resume, and especially with resume writing, sometimes there's a phrase that I'm, I'm, I know I'm not quite getting it right, and I'll put it in ChatGPT and ask for suggestions. Um, so chat GPT for writer's block, idea generation, and we recommend rephrasing and Grammarly for editing. I think it's really, I'm really impressed with the robustness of the program. And then lastly, you want to hone your editing skills so that you don't have to rely so much on AI that you know what good writing is. And by focusing on making sure you have strong subjects and looking at your transition words as looking at your transition words like not not as like being bad but as like this flag of like it's like they're saying hey look at look at me i think there's something else here i think you need to revise it so i lo i i love transition words in second drafts i don't like them in final drafts i like them in second drafts and then improve your email writing um Make it more polished and really use that appreciation. Oh my God, it really works a lot. So on that, um, Q&A, we have lots of questions in the chat. We have lots and lots of questions. So I'm going to stop sharing and take a look at your questions. We have some questions in chat and we have some questions in the Q&A. I'm going to start uh I'm going to start with some of the questions in chat and then we'll look at some of the questions in the where's my chat there uh where's my chat hold on oh I lost my, my chat menu and oh there it is I see it all right. Um, yes, this is being recorded. It will be shared with people, so no worries about that. It is being recorded. Uh, can we employ these skills in writing research proposals? Absolutely, because it's professional writing, right? It's professional writing. Um, and let's come to... Uh, Good. Let's. Uh, we're going to come to our Q and A here. So, uh, they want to know. Florence asks us if these AI tools can be used to write academic research. How do I write res a research for a course I didn't study? I don't think you can use it to write academic research. I think you have to do the research yourself. Um, I think you have to do the research yourself, right? So um, it, it, any type of writing, you need to do it yourself. Um, recommend for rephrasing if Quillbot is an AI written tool as well. Um, for rephrasing again, I would I would go for chat GPT and make it really focused. Let me I can show you an example. Let me show you another example of a rephrasing, and I'm going to share my screen. You can, no, you can't use AI for a literature review. You can't use it for anything. You need to do the writing yourself. You need to do the writing yourself. Let me quickly share my screen. Um, share. And so, uh, Sometimes I use it for grammar questions. Like if you have to say on or in, you say I'm in school or I'm at school and why do we make the difference? Um, I had, I was working with a woman. She didn't, I, 
this she had experience living overseas we wanted to put it in the resume the wording wasn't very interesting so i asked them to reword it and it gave me some suggestions i didn't like the first one i said no please do it again do it again so this type of thing if it's a specific phrase it can help you get your phrasing more uh more rich, more engaging. Let's come back to our, I'm going to stop share. And we're going to look again at some of our questions. Um, so I don't, I don't know that much about Quillbot, but I would be careful of, a, of using any AI, AI for writing. I like Grammarly for editing. Um, what can, so Abu Bakr, Oh, yes, ask a question. He said, can you suggest a step-by-step -step process for writing? That's a great question. That's a great question. Boy, we could have a whole webinar on this one. So writing, the challenge with writing is that it consists of the creative process where you're coming up with ideas and you're writing. And on the other hand, it consists of the editing process, which is analytical and it's critical and it's shrewd and it's cutting and they don't coexist well together. And so the best thing that you can do is separate the creative and the editing processes. Um, I can post some things in our chat one of the, a writer, a, a researcher and writer who I follow, he recommends one of the best things to do is to do free writing a couple minutes a day. Most people, their, their critical analytical mind is more developed or can dominate the creative writing process. And so anything you can do to separate these to make each one stronger is good. Um, then they ask, so David Youssef asked, can you give suggestions for tonality in writing? Um, David, by tonality, do you mean like formality? Um, I, I'm not sure what he means by this, maybe by like formality. Uh, again, I think with Grammarly and also with MS Word, you can choose formal or informal and it'll give you those. Um, so thank you. What if I use AI in a paper critique assignment? Again, I think the professor will know. <laughs> They'll know. They'll know. And so if, if you're having it write a critique, it, it, it's, it's too, it's too, it's not the correct usage of it. You want to really try to write it yourself. Um, and then, uh, what if, let's see, Clinton, I do. Thank you for the seminar. I use ChatGPT to write as well, but I recite, recite some, rewrite some of the statements to suit the tone. I need, and it mostly looks like there's no need to edit. What do you suggest? So Clinton, don't let it, don't, you don't have it right for you. You do the writing. Because otherwise, we know it's ChatGPT. We know, just like you knew that the thing I had at the beginning was written by ChatGPT. Um, so I, I would recommend that you write it yourself and use Grammarly to edit it. That that's what I would that's what I would recommend. I hope that was helpful. Any other questions? Any other questions? I think that's all of our questions from the Q&A section. Oh, someone asked a question about the AI detection. We can share screen again and show you. Um, so, and I think they, they said, so you can, I mean, it, you can type AI detection tool. And you can see there are a lot that come up. AI content detector, GPT-0, um, right? So we can put it in. And that was how I found out that other element was, 
was written by a person. Some people can use other platforms to avoid detection and they think like, how do I say this? If, so I had a student where they, their content was totally written by AI. They put it through another feature to make it so that it didn't look, so that the detection was zero, but I still knew it was written by AI. So anyway, that's the tool. The tools are getting, the tools are getting more and more sophisticated. Um, all right, how accurate, Mariam, you're right. It's not it's not a hundred percent accurate, but it it's it's a, it gives us a starting point and and uh so that AI detector. Um how did I find out, please? How did I find out? <laughs> how did I find out that that student was because another student showed me the platform that the student used to avoid detection? So um, we have a good question from Olivia. Olivia asks, can you write it yourself and then use ChatGPT for good grammar? Sure. I mean, because that's really focused. You can put in ChatGPT and say, you know, please give me feedback on my grammar. Um, oh, my God, Polinas, you wrote a cover letter and asked ChatGPT if it wrote it. I don't know. ChatGPT, maybe he was being funny. Maybe maybe ChatGPT was just being funny with you. I don't I don't know. <laughs> oh, um, so it's evolving, and and I'm having to rely on my students to help me understand how it's being used and how it's helping them. And um, it's evolving, and it's evolving so quickly. But I think bottom line, you know, having you develop strong writing skills, some of those tips I shared can be super helpful. Um, is there anyone who would like to ask a question? Oh, we have a hand up. Yes, please. Sylvia. Sylvia, you can uh, ask your question, please. And Ruben. So let's start with Sylvia. I may um I need I may need Angela's help with helping them to unmute. They are unmuted right now. They can start speaking if they are on call. Okay. Sylvia. Um sorry, my, my question has already been answered, so thank you. All right, thank you, Sylvia. Ruben, how about you? You have your hand up. Ruben, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Oh, I think he's off um emmanuel you can go ahead and ask your question okay thank you very much i think i don't have a question <laughs> i just wanted to you know thank you for the inputs the on different tools i think uh especially we young people we we are tending to rely much on the technology than the like, using technology to actually you'd be the best in me writing. So I thank you for the interesting session. I would say that this was even more than a session to teach us on how to do it better. But at the same time, you know, advising us to use this technology for our good, not <laughs> for us to, to lower our standards. Thank right. you so much for this. Thank you, Emmanuel. I, Emmanuel, I think you're exactly right. I think people, they think there are such high standards and how, how am I going to meet these high standards? And trying to find shortcuts with ChatGPT is going to hurt, it's going to hurt you. 
Um, so better work on your writing yourself, use these tools to help you with editing and you'll be much more successful. Um, oh, wow, thank you. Yeah. Christabel, you're on. What question do you have? She can unmute herself. Hello, good evening. Hi, Christabel, um, welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much for the question. I wanted to ask if um, you can actually write and then after writing, you give it to chat GBT to provide you a feedback and restructure it for you. And after the restructuring, you will um, submit the restructured work. Does that count as AI generated? It might. It might. And, you know, I gave you an example at the very start where I asked ChatGPT to give me feedback on this person's essay. And I disagreed 100% with everything it said. And so, so you can do that, but, but look at the response you get with a critical eye of thinking, boy, do I really agree with that? And so, so you can, the more specific and the more focused your question, the better, but really don't, don't trust it as the be all and end all, you know, look at the feedback with a real critical, with a real critical eye. Um, it's, okay. a, it's a good, okay. it's a good question. It's a good question. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I think that's all of our questions. Oh, wait. Angela, I think we do we have some more people with their hands raised. Paulinus, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, good day, ma'am. Um, thank you for this um beautiful lecture. I really got key takeaways from the lectures. Please, I hope you can hear me. Please, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, I wanted to ask. Um, when we are writing an official email, for example, a code email to, um, a professor, is how do we end? Like, what will be our closing remark? Like, the, is it like your sincerely, your sincerely, your best regards? I kind of having some, you know, issues with that. Great question. And and maybe for a future session, we can talk more about email writing. Keep it simple, just sincerely. Thank you, sincerely. I think sincerely, you can't go wrong with it. So that's how I would end it. Thank you, sincerely. Thank you. I appreciate your time, sincerely. Okay, 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 okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Thank you Paulina. Thank you. David, welcome. You're next. What question can can we help you with? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for this session. So I want to ask, um, since Grammarly is recommended for editing and considering that it's also an AI tool, now when using it for editing, does it give a 100% kind of, a 99 to 100% kind of, um, um, I, I don't really know how to structure it, but when trying to detect if the article was written by an AI, so can 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 you clear off like 99 to 100% of, of that? So I think, so Grammarly gives you sentence level editing. So if it's your language and you're just making corrections of word choice or grammar or punctuation, it shouldn't come up as being written by AI because it wasn't. It's just giving you editing suggestions. Does that make sense? Yes, it's clear. Thank you. I think so. I think it's... Um, Good. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting question. So they're different. You just be so cautious with the AI 
We have a question from Catherine too about uh, which AI can be used to check plagiarism in papers. Um, my university has a plagiarism detector. So I don't know what AI you use. My school has a special software that they pay for that checks for plagiarism. I think we have a couple more questions. We still have time. Turn it in. Thank you, Simente. That's what we have. We have turn it in. Paulinas, thank you. Quillbot can do it. Good. We have time for another question. Good. Thank you, Angela. So Grammarly does check for plagiarism. That's good. The premium version. All righty. Another question. Ishimwe, welcome. You're on. What can we help you with? Okay, thank you. I hope I you're hearing me. Yes. Okay, my name is Ishimwe. I joined it somehow late and I wanted to learn more about this topic. I'm asking how can I get the record as fast as possible? Thank you. You're welcome. I think everyone who signs up automatically gets the recording. Um, we'll make sure, if, if, I think I'm correct for that, correct, Angela? We'll make sure that everyone's on the call gets a copy of the recording. Thank you so much. I'm glad you liked our session today. Yeah. Thank you. I think we have time for two more questions. Two more questions. Hey, Rich, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Rich. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Um, I want to ask this question. In case of academic writing, is it advisable to use AI? And if you use it, how do you reference it in your, in your writing? Sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Maybe could you put your question in chat? There's, I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Okay, I'm not allowed to send a message in the chat, that's why. Oh, okay. What's your question again? My question is that in case of academic writing, if you advise how to use AI, and if you do so, how do you reference it? Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I don't. I can't understand your question. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. Oh, is it advisable to use AI in academic writing? Absolutely not. No, don't, don't. It's, it's, you're going to get into trouble. <laughs> you're going to get into trouble. Your professor will know, will know, and they're going to throw your essay in the trash, right? And did Jacob ask, what if you've already made the mistake and submitted it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you could reach out to them and say you made a mistake. Could you resubmit it? I don't know. Um, you guys, I think this is about all the time we have for today. Um, and uh, and I hope, uh, thank you all so much for joining. We really, really appreciate it. Everyone will get a copy of the recording. Go to the, the Baobab um, chat feature. Um, Angela, can uh, could you please put the link into chat so people know where to go? So if you have more questions, I can answer them for you there. I think I also can go to it. Um, thank you all so much. That was really, I, mean, I enjoyed being able to share this with you. Um, Go to the, the Baobab chat forum where I'm there. And let me see if I can quickly put in the link for it. Uh, Baobab chat. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Put your question in that forum and I can respond there. Thank you all so much. Really, really appreciate it. This was fun. Until next time, we'll see you in January. Thank you all. Bye. Beyond the skies, you and I were breaking bounds on Baobab.